Hello. I'd like to have a conversation with you all today about Elijah. Elijah. Aliyahu. Aliyahu. Or Elijah. Uh, the uh, book of uh, First Kings is very important and, and, and uh, an overlooked book for the most part. But uh, lots and lots of good lessons in there. And so I like to concentrate on this spirit of Elijah or Aliyahu and have, uh, have a really good conversation about it with you. So um, most of us have heard of the prophet Aliyahu, um, but maybe haven't quite connected to the spiritual messages contained within his story or his life. <clears throat> we can't, don't have time to go over the entire uh, life of Aliyahu, but we'll hit on, um, I think, a very important uh, period of his life. And uh, it starts out, we'll go ahead and then uh, get into it where the scene unfolds with Aliyahu on Mount Carmel with the children of Israel assembled. And what's going on is Isabel or uh, uh, Jezebel, some people know her by. Um, was uh, basically a prophetess or a witch of Baal. And she had infiltrated into the children of Yahuwah and were trying to lead them astray with uh, idolatry and witchcraft and, uh, you know, demons and all kinds of weird stuff. So she had a bunch of priests, and the priests were uh, demon-possessed. Um because we'll, we're going we're gonna to look into that, but there's examples of the spirit of, uh, of demon possession that was in the priest of Baal, if you will, and uh, Isabel as well, and other people um, in scriptures. And we can recognize that same spirit of evil spirit, you know, a demon. And so that uh, it leaves no doubt, really, that these priests of Baal were demon-possessed. Okay. So, uh, let's get into it a little bit. Very interesting, really. Very, very interesting uh, uh, story here. So, start out here uh, with Mount Carmel. Uh, there's a guy called Acab, uh, and he uh, saw Elijah or Aliyahu coming, and he said, Is that you, O disturber of Yeshurael? And he answered, I am not disturbed, Yeshurael, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken the commands of Yahuwah, and you have followed the Balaam. So here's Yahuwah saying, hey, I'm not a disturber or troublemaker in Israel. You are. You're the one that are forsaking the commands of Yahuwah. And you're the one that's committing idolatry. Okay. <coughs> and now, uh, and now send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat as Isabel's or Jezebel table. So this Akab then sent for all the children of Yezreel and gathered the prophets on Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal. And Aliyahu came to all the people and said, How long would you keep hopping between two opinions? If Yahuwah is all, 
follow him. And the Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. And Eliyahu said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of Yahuwah, but the prophets of Baal are 450 men. So here he thinks he's the only prophet left of, Baal, of uh, Yahuwah. Okay? He thinks he's standing all alone now, Elijah does, against 450. Now let them give us two bulls, and let them choo chosen, let them choose one bull for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on the wood, but set no fire. And I, I prepare the other bull, and shall lay it on the wood, but set no fire. And you shall call on the name of your mighty one, and I call on the name of Yahuwah. And the all who answers by fire, he is Allahim. So all the people answered and said, the word is good. So they're saying, okay, this is a fair duel. This is fair. Let's, let's see who the real one is, Baal or Yahuwah. See who's, who the real mighty one is. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first. And you are many, and call on the name of your mighty one, but set no fire. So they took the bull which was given them and prepared it and called on the name of Baal and from morning even until noon. So they started off in the morning. They're calling on the name of Baal, and it's getting up to be around noon. Saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they leaped about the altar which they had made. So now they started doing dance, jigging around the fire. Woo, 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 got going nuts, right? And it came to be at noon that Aliyahu taunted them and says, and now Elohim's going to start te I mean, uh, Elijah starts teasing them and taunting them because nothing's happening. They've been doing this for about four hours or so now. Uh, and he said, cry out loud. In, in other words, scream loud, or maybe he's not hearing you. <laughs> cry out loud, for he is a mighty one. He is meditating, or is he busy? Or is he on a journey? Or it could be that he is asleep and has to be waking up. So scream louder. Call his name louder. Wake him up. And they cried out even louder. So, that, so now all of a sudden they're doing what you, he's sitting there taunting them and teasing them. So they start doing it. They start screaming that it's for him louder. And they cut themselves. So now, now all of a sudden they're dancing and screaming and hollering and hooting. And now they, they start cutting on themselves. They're cutting themselves up. Cutting themselves to ball. According to their ruling, and according, that's according to their custom, you know, how they, how they acted when they were calling on Baal, with knives and spears. So they're cutting themselves up with knives and spears. Probably cutting their legs like that and their arms and stuff. Who knows what they were doing? Cutting across their forehead, maybe? Who knows? Until the blood gushed out on them. So all of a sudden they're cutting some they're doing some serious cutting. That blood's gushing out. You ever see a, a, a wound gush? I mean, that's some nasty wounds. And it came to be when midday was past. So they're doing this about an hour or so, or so then, because midday passed. And they prophesied until the time of bringing the evening offering. So here they're running around, prophesying, bleeding all over the place, screaming and hollering and dancing until evening. Now it's starting to get to, to, getting to be evening. And there was no voice and no one answered and no one paying attention. So now all of a sudden the people are getting bored with this. Can you imagine being there, seeing these guys running around, Stripping their clothes off, 
cutting themselves, screaming and hollering, bleeding all over the place, prophesying around this altar. And uh, it's not lit. It's, it's not been lit. There was no fire there. And uh, all of a sudden, the group of people is probably sitting like this, watching what they were doing. They're not doing this. Ugh, this is getting boring. Wake me up if it, if it lights up. So all that craziness has become boring because they've been doing it all day. So they're tired of watching it. At first, they were probably like, wow, oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. You know, they're doing all that crazy cutting and dancing around, stripping their clothes off, probably freaking them out at first, but now they're bored with it. Then Aliyahu said to all the people, come closer. He waking them up. Come on now, wake up, come closer. And all the people came closer to him. So they woke up and they, they, they started ignoring those crazy guys, start coming closer to Yahuwah. Now that 450 guys were doing that. So it had to be quite a sight. Okay, they've lost interest. Now the surrounding, coming closer to uh, Elijah. I mean, uh, Aliyahu. And he repaired the altar of Yahuwah that was broken down. So now he starts setting up an altar that was broken down. And Aliyahu took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, or Yaqub, to whom the word of Yahuwah had come, saying, Israel is your name. And when the, with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahuwah, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seas of seed. And he arranged the wood and cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood and said, Fill four jars with water. Now these are big jars now. And pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. So here we go. So he's got all this belt. Now he's going to douse it with water. Can you start a fire with wet wood and meat, uh, fresh cut meat? You know, still got blood all over it and dump all this water over top of it all. You think you're going to start that up on fire? <laughs> Not too likely you ain't. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. Man, they done doused that wood severely with water. I mean, it was soaking wet. How are you going to start a fire like that? Well, no man's going to. You ain't no way. You're going to make a big pile of wood out there. Let me take three big jars of water, dump it on there, and then do that three times. And let me see you start that fire. You ain't going to start that fire. So no man would be able to start that fire. You see that? It could only be started by Yahoo if it was going to get started. That's why this he did this. I mean, he's making it perfectly clear to everybody. This ain't me going to start this fire. Okay? It's going to be impossible for me to do it. So don't be saying that I tricked you and, and threw a something in there, lit something or whatever on my own, because ain't no man going to be able to do this. That's why he's having them dump all that water on it. And the water flowed around the altar. So here, there's so much water, it's flowing now around the altar. You made that ditch, right? And he filled the trench with water, too. So, so he filled the, made sure he filled the trench up with water. This, he doused it all in water, soaked it, saturated it with water, and then filled up the entire the trench that was dug around it in water. Well, it was filled with water too. So there ain't no way he's going to start that altar up and get it burning. No way. And it came to be at the time of bringing the evening offering that Alayahu, the prophet, came near and said, Yahuwah, all of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yet and Israel, let it be known today. You are Yahuwah, and 
Yisrael. And I, your servant, have done all these things by your word. Answer me, O Yahuwah, answer me. And let this people know that you are Yahuwah, all. And you shall turn their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of Yahuwah fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. <laughs> so now, I wonder what the 450 priests over there that running around cutting yourselves up and going getting naked and cutting yourselves up with swords and, and spears and knives bleeding all over the place. I wonder what their what the what it looks on their face. Um, they're probably exhausted doing it all day long, right? So they're probably over there laying down, sitting down, leaning up against the altar, you know, watching him. And here all of a sudden it comes the fire of Yahuwah, and not only did it burn up the the the, uh, the, the uh, meat, you know, the offering. It burned up the stones and the wood, the, 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 all the wood that was saturated in water, burned up the rocks that he made the altar with, burnt the rocks up. Not only did that, the fire went down, consumed all that, made it into ashes, and then the fire went down and licked the water up out of the trench. Now what kind of, whew, can you imagine being there and seeing that happen? I mean, that's phenomenal, really. And all the people saw and fell on their faces. I guess they would. I mean, yeah. You saw something like that happen. Yeah, I bet you'd be hiding your face in the dirt real quick. And said, Yahuwah, he is Yah all. Yahuwah, he is the all. And Aliyahu said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Aliyahu brought them down to the Wadi, Kishon, and slaughtered them there. So there we go. Yahuwah just slaughtered all those 450 prophets of Baal. And uh, what was it? 400 prophets of Asherah. So 850 people? He just had them all killed. Okay, so how hyped up was Aliyahu at that point? He was hyped up. Man, he was on a roll. Okay, well, I can imagine, you know, sitting there doing all that, and then it's just the water, the saturation, the water didn't stop anything. And that was all the rocks, the wood, the animal sacrifice, all burn up quick, turn to dust, and then that, the fire sitting there licking up the water in the trough. I guess he was fired up, <laughs> no pun intended. So he had the, <clears throat> the 850 prophets uh, captured, the children of Israel there, and they, he took them down there by the by the uh, pool there and had them all executed. All right. So let's stop with the with the story of Elijah right there, and let's compare. I want you to you know let's compare something here about this weird spirit. That was in these these prophets of Baal uh, that caused these guys, according to their ruling, their custom or, of worshiping, uh, why they thought they had to mutilate their bodies, you know, get naked and cut themselves up, you know, make themselves bleed in order to worship this false deity named Baal. All right. Let's look at a comparison real quick. Then we'll come back to Elijah, okay? So let's go to uh, let's go to Luke real quick. Luke chapter eight, verse twenty-six. And there they sailed to the country of the Guardianus, which is opposite of Galilee, 
And as he went out and onto the land, he was met by a certain man. This is speaking of Yahushua. He was met by a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no garments. So he was naked. Now stripped all his clothes off. And he was not living in the house, but in the tombs. So he was living inside of the tombs where dead people were buried, man. In, in, in the graveyard, basically. And when he saw Yahushua, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Yahushua, son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torture me. So all of a sudden, this ain't the man speaking now. This is the demon that's in this man. This man's naked, filthy, stinks, he's cut up, okay? And now all of a sudden, this demon sees Yahushua, he knows who he is. The demons, if you believe Yahuwah is one, you do well. Because the demons believe and tremble. This demon was trembling. He knew who he was. He was the one living Yahuwah incarnated, and he knew it. That's why he ran up to him and started uh, begging him not to destroy him. <laughs> so anyway, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles being guarded, and breaking the bonds, he was driven by the demon into the lonely places, you know, into the tombs. So this, this dude, this man, uh, had superhuman strength, okay, because of the demons that were in him. <clears throat> Have you ever tried to grab a chain up, especially the type of chain and shackle that they use to contain a person, a human being, and try to and break it? Yeah, there's no way you're going to snap that chain. You know what I'm saying? This, I mean, you got to be like Samson or something, man. You know, but uh, anyway, you ain't going to break the, the chain. But this dude was able to break, a, break chains and shackles. Okay. And so that superhuman human strength was not coming from the fleshly man, but from the demons that possessed him. And Yahushua asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered into him. And they were begging him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. The abyss, you know, the outer darkness, or Sheol, under the deepest parts of the earth. You know, in Hebrew, know where there's no light. Now, there's no light at all in the abyss or the outer darkness, okay? It's total darkness. And a herd of many pigs were feeding there on the mountain. And they begged him to allow them to go into them, and he allowed them. Now, why? Well, it wasn't, obviously, this particular place was not inhabited by Israelites because they didn't raise pigs. They didn't keep herds of swine, all right, because they they were dirty, unclean animals to them. They never, they didn't even want to be around them. They didn't eat them or anything. So, uh, obviously, this was a, a place of inhabited by Gentiles because they had, they were, the town which was, uh, inhabited by the, the Gentiles, uh, had herders out there uh, that were looking up, looking after the, the herd of swine, okay? And so uh, they begged him to let them go into them, and rather just put us into that unclean animal. I mean, we're unclean spirits anyway. Put us into the unclean animals rather than throw us in the abyss, okay? And so he allowed them. So he allowed them to do that, come out of the man and go into the pigs. 
And the demons, having gone out of the man, entered into the pigs. And the herd rushed down the steep place into the lake and drowned. Why? Well, just like if a demon comes into a human, disturbs and disrupts their life to the point where they're pulling off their clothes and getting naked and cutting themselves, destroying the temple of Yahuwah, it drives you nuts. And the demon comes into the person. You know, so same thing with the pigs. Pigs went nuts when they got demon possessed. Took off and ran down the hill and drowned themselves. Okay, they just went crazy. Hurt themselves, killed themselves, just like people will do that are demon possessed as well. Yeah. And when those feeding them saw what had taken place, uh, you know, the overseers of the, of the herd, they fled and reported it in the city and in the countryside. So they came out to see what had taken place. All the people said, what? Let's go see what this guy's talking about. And came to Yahusha and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at the feet of Yahusha, dressed and in his right mind. And they were all afraid. Now, what's going on there? Well, these people chained this man up in shackles and chains, right? And he broke the shackles and chains, and he's out there in the tombs, <coughs> screaming and hollering day and night, naked, cutting himself. Nobody goes over there in fear of this guy that's a demon possessed. They all know he's got demons in him. You know, something wrong with this guy's crazy, right? Of course, he can break chains and shackles. Ain't nobody wants to fight him, you know, for sure. They're afraid of him. And now all of a sudden this guy is sitting at the feet of Yahusha, probably hugging his feet and kissing on him. Probably doesn't say that, but that's what I imagine. And uh, he's dressed, got all his clothes back on, and he's in his right mind. He's, in, he's got self-control. What's self-control? You know, in Galatians, uh, self-control is... Parts uh, is one of the spirits, the fruits of the spirit, right? So the fruits of the spirit include self-control. So this man here has now got fruits of spirit in him, because he is in his right mind. He's got self-control now, blowing the people's mind. So what? We we'll say so now. All of a sudden, these people from the towns and countryside that came to check this uh, the story out is fearing Yahusha, because Yahusha is more powerful than the demons that were in this man. So now they're, they're dead scared of Yahusha, man. Wow, who is this guy? You know, that has, is stronger than the demons. See that? And they were afraid, and they were afraid. So they were afraid of him. And those who had seen it reported to them how he had been possessed by demons, was healed. Was healed. So him who was possessed by the demons were healed. And all the multitude of the neighborhood of the Gardenians asked him to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. See, they were scared to death of Yahushua, man. And he entered into the boat and returned. And the man from whom the demons had gone out was begging him to be with him. But Yahushua sent him away, saying, Go back to your house and relate what Yahuwah has done for you. And he went away proclaiming through all the city what Yahushua did for him. So, there you go. That sounds an awful lot similar to what these priests were doing. When they were stripping off their clothes and cutting themselves. That's what this guy was doing. So they were under the influence of the same spirit, were they not? Let's go to Mark 5, uh, 15. So we'll go start, start at verse 5 and 1, Mark. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardenians, and when he came out of the boat, at once there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean ruach, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains 
had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and no one was able to tame him. And continually, night and day, Leah and Yom, and continually, Leah and Yom, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. It's the same guy. It's giving just a little bit different detail, more detail actually. Here he is, nighttime and daytime, the complete Yom, he was in the mountains and in the tombs and the graveyards, crying out, screaming, hollering, carrying on. What were the what were the uh, priests of all doing? They were crying out and carrying on, weren't they? And cutting himself with stones. And what were they doing? Cutting themselves with knives and spears. And they were naked. It doesn't say he was naked here, but it's the same exact story. We just read about Luke, which said he was naked. He wouldn't keep clothes on. Kept tearing his clothes off and cutting himself up. And seeing Yahushua from a distance, he ran and bowed down to him. He recognized he was Yahuwah, and they were at the demon went over there and bowed down to him because he knew he was the one living Yahuwah. And heaven called out with a loud voice, said, what have I to do with you, Yahusha, son of the Most High All? Pledge to all not to torment me. So he's begging him not to torment him or torture him. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him very much that he would not send him out of the region. Now a great herd of pigs was there, feeding near the mountains. And all the demons begged him, saying, Send us into the pigs, so that we have, so that we enter into them. And he gave them permission. See, the demons can't do nothing without Yahuwah's permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. They were about 2,000. That's a big herd of pigs, 2,000 pigs. That's a lot. And the herd rushed down the steep field into the sea and drowned in the sea. And those who fed the pigs fled and reported it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what had taken place. So they came to Yahusha and saw the demon-possessed one, him who had the legion sitting and dressed. See, so there you go. And dressed, so that means he was naked before. All right, running around naked, so that just confirms that. And in his right mind, and in his right mind, he had self-control, one of the fruits of the Spirit. And they were afraid. They were afraid of Yahusha. And those who saw it related to them what was done to the demon-possessed one and about the pigs. And they began to plead with him to leave their borders. Scared to death of Yahusha, man. So instead of asking him to save them, you know, if they could follow him or stay with them, because he ran off all the evil, evil spirits. They was pleading and begging him to leave their borders. They were that's how scared of him they were. I mean, they weren't they were less afraid of the demons than they were of Yahusha. Crazy. And as he was entering into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might go with him. And Yahushua did not allow him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and report to them what the Master has done for you and how he had compassion on you. And he left and began to proclaim in the ten cities, or Decapolis, all that Yahushua had done for him, and all marveled. All marveled. All right. So, let's get 
that's a real good comparison between the spirit that was uh, working in the in the priest of Baal and under the direction of Isabel, you know, and uh, this demon this demon possessed man who had legion in him, almost the exact same spirit, was it not? I'd say it was. So uh, before we're going to go back and get into Elijah here now into the into the mega message that I'm trying to uh, really want to express here in this lesson through Elijah. But uh, before we do, let me just say this. If you have the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in you, demons cannot enter into your temple, into your tent of his fleshly body. It's the temple of Yahuwah. Demons ain't going to come near it. Okay, so you don't have to be a fearful. Don't be fearful of the demons. He who is inside of you is million, billion, trillion times more powerful than all the demons put together. Okay, and what we just read should should prove that to you. Okay, those demons uh, could have been two thousand, could have been six thousand. Who knows how many was in that poor man, but. As soon as they saw Yahushua come, and they ran over there and bowed down to him and paid homage to him and begged him not to hurt them, torment them, or send them into the abyss. They knew he could do whatever he wanted, and they couldn't stop him. So he was way more powerful, and the people feared him because they knew he was way more powerful than uh, the demon-possessed the man who was, who was demon possessed with legion all those different demons crazy stuff you know so the moral of that story is don't fear demons and the devil and you know if you have yahushua and dwell in you they can't touch you they have to get his permission to even try you or do anything at all to you okay you can see uh you know he gave them permission to go into the pigs. They, had, they couldn't just come out of the guy and do whatever they wanted. They had to ask him, well, well can, can we go to the pigs? Because they knew he could do whatever he wanted. You know? So he, he has, they have to get permission from Yahuwah before they can do anything, especially to Yahuwah's chosen people. So fear not. Okay? Uh, perfect love, which is Yahuwah, or Yahushua's indwelling spirit, perfect love casts out all fear. That means he's in you, his perfect love's in you, it casts out all fear, because who do you have to fear if you, the spirit of Yahuwah is indwelling you? If who is for you, who can be against you? Who can you who are you fearing? What 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 fear do you have if you have the indwelling spirit of Yahuwah? You shouldn't have any fear because perfect love, God is love. His perfect love casts out all fear because you have the most powerful force in the entire creation living inside of you, the one that created everything. <laughs> wow, okay. So, let's get back to our story about Elijah or Aliyahu even better. So we left off where he had slaughtered the 850 prophets of Baal. All right. So now we'll open back up with Acab, the, the troublemaker, if you will, uh, runs to Isabel, or Jezebel, and reports to her all that Alayahu has done. Okay, uh, so Isabel sent a messenger back to Aliyahu after Acab had spilled the beans, told her everything that happened over there Car uh, Mount Carmel. Uh, she sent a messenger to Aliyahu saying, So let the mighty ones do to me and more also, basically what you did to them, let the mighty ball do it to me also, if I do not make your life as the fire is the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. 
So she's saying, I'm going to do to you what you did to them, okay? Uh, by tomorrow at this time, if not, let Baal do to me uh, even more than what you did to them. So she's, she's making an oath, in other words, to find out, uh, Aliyahu and kill him, basically, is what she's doing, swearing that she's going to find him and kill him. And so Aliyahu feared, and he rose up and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba, Bathsheba, which belongs to the tribe of Yehuda, and left his servant there. But he himself went on a Yom's journey, which is about 24 hours, into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he might die. So he's so afraid of this Isabel and that he's the only one left and nobody loves him and he's all alone. He's now he's laying here under this tree praying to die. It is enough. Now, Yahuwah, take my life. For I am no better than my father's. And he lay and slept under a broom tree and see a messenger touched him and said to him, Rise and eat. And he looked and saw by his head a cake baked on coals and a jar of water, and so he ate and drank. So Yahuwah sent this messenger to him, and he made him something to eat and brought him a jar of water. And turned and lay down, and the messenger of Yahuwah came back the second time and touched him and said, Rise, eat, for the journey is too much for you. And he rose up and ate and drank and went into, in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Kareb, the mountain of Elohim. And there he went into a cave and spent the night there. And see, the word of Yahuwah came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, what are you doing in this cave, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for Yahuwah, my all of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have thrown down your altars, and they have slain your prophets with, with the sword. And I am left, I am left, I alone, and they seek my life to take it. And he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before Yahuwah, and see Yahuwah passed by, and a great and strong wind tearing the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces before Yahuwah. Yahuwah was not in the wind. So here we go. You know, he's, he thinks he's all alone. Nobody loves him. Everybody's out to kill him. He's the last one that's keeping the commands of Yahuwah. So he just wants to die, get it over with. Uh, so he's in, in some kind of a spiritual depression type thing, isn't he? And uh, so here now, Yahuwah comes by with a real strong wind, like hurricane forces type wind, because it's tearing down the mountains and breaking rocks in pieces. So it had to be a, a very powerful wind. Okay, but... Yahuwah was not in it. Hmm. After And after the wind, an earthquake. Yahuwah was not in the earthquake. In the earth, and after the earthquake, a fire. Yahuwah was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. So what's happening? Here Yahuwah causes an earthquake, and then a great fire after the mighty wind deal, and uh, uh, it says Yahuwah was not in it. So what does that mean? Well, Aliyahu is still alive, isn't he? So he didn't get destroyed. He was fearful that Isabel was going to get a hold of him and kill him, right? Well, here's Yahuwah saying, Just look at this mighty wind tearing apart mountains and rocks. You know, great earthquake, a fire. And none of that hurt you, did it? And none of that hurt Aliyahu. He's still alive. Not a scratch on him, right? And then all of a sudden, a small, quiet voice. 
There come you who's going to tell him something now. And it came to be when Aliyahu heard it, that he wrapped his face in his robe and went out and stood at the cave opening. And see, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Alayahu? And what are you doing in hiding in this cave? And he said, I have been very jealous for Yahuwah, all of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have thrown down your altars, and they have slain your prophets with the sword, and I am left, I alone, and they seek my life to take it. Now he's scared they're going to kill him. He's the only one you're after, and they're going to get him, hiding in the cave. And Yahuwah said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And you shall go in and anoint Kazala as sovereign over Aram. And anoint Yahu, son of Nimshi, as sovereign over Yisrael. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mikola, as prophet in your place. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Kazala. Yahu does kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yahu, Elisha does kill. And I receive, I reserve 7,000 in Yezreel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Wow. Now I reserve 7,000 in Yezreel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Okay. So. That's our lesson. And what have we learned? Well, we've learned that the, the, the evil spirit, uh, the spirit of delusion, who was in the 850 priests, of Baal and Isabel uh, was was very it was either the same or very closely related to the spirit that was in the man that was possessed by legion well, at least 2,000 demons I guess maybe more doesn't really say but uh, because they were wanting to pull off their clothes get naked and cut themselves that's a bad demon. You know, that's a very bad demon. Them demons can't harm you if you have the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in you, the Ruach HaKadash. But if you don't, and you start getting those kind of thoughts to get naked, pull off your clothes and cut yourself, you better get to praying to Yahuwah for protection and ask for the gift of the Ruach HaKadash to come into you and protect you and seal you for the day of redemption. Okay? Fast and pray until you receive the Ruach, because then you're protected, all right? So, uh, we've learned that, and then the other thing I think that stands out here is uh, Elijah, or Eliyahu, who was very familiar with the power of the Ruach, uh, was fearful of a woman. He was fearful of a woman. He thought Isabel was going to get a hold of him. And he was up hiding in a cave from her. Was he not? Yes, he was. And, uh, <coughs> uh, Yahuwah gave, came and, and taught him a very valuable lesson for Allah and us if we only adhere to it and open up our eyes and ears to the Ruach. And that lesson is, if Yahuwah is not in it, why are you fearing it? Okay, in other words, Yahuwah was not in the mighty wind that, that brought down mountains and busted rocks to pieces 
so it didn't hurt Elijah. Yahuwah was not in the earthquake that shook the earth and no doubt crumbled the mountains and rocks, right? And that didn't hurt. Yahuwah wasn't in that, so that did not hurt Aliyahu. And the fire that came did not hurt Aliyahu, though I'm sure it burned up the landscape, right? And so the lesson was, if it is not my will that you die, you're not going to die. Okay? So, it wasn't his will that Aliyahu died in the high winds. It wasn't Yahuwah's will that Aliyahu died in the earthquake. It wasn't Aliyahu's will that Elijah died in the fire. Right? And so, it was not Aliyahu's will that I mean, it was not Yahuwah's will that Aliyahu would die at the hands of Isabel. So he did not. And then, matter of fact, after he told him that, he said, well, you fearing her? It's not my will that she that you could die. In other words, if Yahuwah wanted to, he could disintegrate her. You know, even if she did show up to kill him. If he wanted to, he could just disintegrate her and all her uh, followers with along with her. You know, same way with Daniel in the lion den. You know, the three Israelites in the furnace. You know, the Jeremiah. Jeremiah, when he got thrown into the well, that deep pit. Okay? <clears throat> Wasn't his will. So nothing happened to them. Don't matter if you're up against an army of 850 of Baal's followers or priests, you know, Satanists or whoever. No matter. Demons even. No matter. If you who is in you, they can't hurt you. Unless it's his will. If it's if it's his will that you die or perish at their hands for his purpose, his greater purpose, then you, I guess we're going to die. But if it's not his will, don't matter who you're up against or what happens to you, you will not. You know, and uh, that's the big lesson here, folks, is we have to trust in Yahuwah. No matter what we find ourselves up against, we need to trust in Yahuwah. And it's so important to have the indwelling spirit of Yahusha in us to, have, to receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. Because that's that's ensures us that we're being delivered, okay? Because you're at that point, there's nothing left to do. If you have the ruach hakadosh in you, you are sealed for the day of redemption. There's nothing left to do. That's it. <clears throat> the only thing you got left to do now is endure and wait upon the return. The expectation, have great expectation for the return of the of the king. Bridegroom. That's all. You, that's all we got to do now. Endure. Help increase the reign of Yahuwah. Grow the reign of Yahuwah by spreading the Basora. About it, man. If you got the if you got the dwelling spirit of Yahusha in you, the Ruach Hakadosh, you're sealed. Ain't a whole lot left for you to do at that point. For as far as salvation goes, you're done. Um. So I think that's pretty much it for uh, that lesson there with Aliyahu. Um, and of course, we all know that uh, after he signed Elisha to take his place and went down and did what Yahuwah told him to, he, he took off, got out of the cave, went down into the wilderness of Damascus, did, he went and anointed those guys, the kings, like what he was supposed to, and then he, he got a hold of a, Elisha, and he, uh, you know, anointed him to take over his place as Yahoo's prophet. And uh, we all know that uh, the sky opened up, and he, in a fiery chariot, came down, picked up oh, Elijah, and took off with him. The part's unknown. So anyway, good lesson for us to adhere to and to understand. And uh, not to fear you know, this, this end time business and uh, everything that's happening and stuff like that. 
uh, we're not to fear. We're not to go hide in a cave and fear death or fear or feel fear anybody really because uh, they can't do nothing to you if you who is not in it. Okay, powerful lesson, man. Powerful, powerful lesson. Uh, I think uh, as far as Isabel goes or Jezebel. Uh, somewhere it's written, I read somewhere, I can't remember where, that uh, Isabel was um, attacked by, uh, I think, a pack of wild dogs, and she was uh, killed and eaten up, and eaten by a pack of wild dogs was her fate, pretty sure. But anyways, I hope this helps everybody, uh, gives people courage and understanding and wisdom uh, enough to uh, accept Yahuwah as their protector and, uh, and follow Yahuwah. Seek his face, get his Ruach in you, and if he is for you, who can be against you? You know? <clears throat> so get Yahuwah in, into your life and dwelling into your temple with you, and you become Yahuwah's temple. And uh, listen for his, his instructions on what he wants you to do from there. He'll lead you to do his bidding, his will, in order to increase the reign of Yahuwah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what's important, especially in these later times here we're finding ourselves in. You know, it's for us to stay focused on Yahuwah. Allow the Ruach in us to call out to the lost sheep and teach the, the people and his, those who are his will hear his voice coming out of you. They will know his voice and they will hear what you're saying to them. If they're not his, they will not hear you. So you might as well just stop, uh, you know, trying because it ain't going to happen. Uh, uh, so very important to understand that and uh, um, yield to the Ruach will let the Ruach speak through you stay focused on Yahuwah and stay focused on the harvest the harvest the fields are whitened they're ripe for the harvest and we're the harvest workers so we're out trying to find the lost sheep, right? So stay focused on the harvest. Let the Ruach teach through you. And pretty soon, it'll all come to, the, to an end. And our, and our Redeemer will come back for us and get, and get us, get his bride to be with him forever and ever. And eternity reign. Paradise. All right, so I hope this helps, and uh, thank you for watching. And remember to stay in love with Yahusha. Yahusha. Trust Yahuwah. Living water. Baruch Haba. Hashem Yahuwah. Living water, Baruch Haba, Bashem Yahuwah. I sing out with praise.
Yeah. 